seated on the throne No power can overthrow Your majesty and splendor He is seated And at His name All the earth will bow in awe At His name Saints and angels all adore Singing holy Is the Lamb
your hand on it and know why. And as I survive all the battles you won, how you were my portion when the wise in me. Hi everyone and welcome to our live stream Sunday at King's Community Church Online. Wherever you are joining us from, it is so good that you're watching this morning. Kids and young people, you can head over to a YouTube channel, there's stuff for you there. And also through this morning we are running live prayer, so if there's anything that you want prayer for, just click on request prayer. We're going to head over now straight to our hedge end site and worship together. Good morning everyone, why don't you stand as we worship together. Whether you're in the room or online, it's so good to be together. We hope you're excited for worship this morning. We certainly are. Can I encourage you to feel free to move? I know we're wearing masks, but let's celebrate this morning. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run full cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in
gather together this morning just to celebrate the story of what God has done in our lives. A really warm welcome to King's Community Church this morning, both here in the room in Hedge End and if you're watching online as well. My name's Chris, this is Becky. We're going to be leading through this morning's meeting. Yeah, good morning. Um, There's a, a verse in the Bible that speaks of God inhabiting the praises of his people. And the um, school teacher in me, kids, would say, what does the word inhabit mean? And it means, and if I was in the classroom, I'd get hands up, but I actually can't see you all. I can see two here. Um, It means live. It means God lives in the praises of his people. He comes, he steps in. So as we praise and worship him this morning, I just want us to be really expectant that God is living in our praises, that he is stepping in to our worship, that he's meeting us right here. And as we reach out to him with hand or heart or whatever, he's coming. Lord, we just pray that you would inhabit the praises of your people this morning, that you'd be here, that you'd continue to be glorified in our midst and that you would move in your name, Jesus. Amen. Let's keep worshipping him, shall we?
now it's almost time for the kids to go out, but just hang on a minute, okay? I just thought we'd flip things around a little bit this week. We normally pray for the kids as they head out to their groups, don't we? But I wondered this week whether the kids could pray for us. Kids, are you up for that? Anyone? Well, I've got a willing volunteer here, Grace, who's going to pray for everyone in a moment, all the adults, that we have a great time and that we continue to meet with God. But if you're brave enough, children, why don't you go and pray for your mum or your dad or an adult near you right now, okay? Pray that they meet with God during this meeting and Grace is going to pray for us all. Dear Lord, I pray for all the adults here and that you will really touch them and make them feel good here. Amen. Amen. Yeah, why don't you pray for your adults on the way out? Yeah, let's give Grace a round of applause. And when you're done, kids, you can head out to groups.
let's just stay with that song for a moment and pray into it if like me you are reading your bread journal this morning or reading your bible and using your bread journal it was that moment uh, where genesis 9 god gives the sign of a rainbow and as i was thinking about that this morning i thought you know what jesus is the true and better rainbow the rainbow was given as a sign that god would show mercy and God put a cross in the sky 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem as a sign that mercy would always triumph over judgment, that his grace in the person of his son and Jesus' sacrifice was enough. So I'd love us off the back of that to pray as we've been singing, God, pour out your rain, but not the rain of judgment as in Noah's day, but the rain of blessing, that the rain of salvation would come, that the rain of the goodness and the mercy of God would come right across the Solon. Can we lift our voices for that and pray for uh, our city and pray for the towns and communities that we live in? After three, one, two, three. Father, we pray. Thank you, Lord. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will pour out your mercy. You will pour out your grace right across this Solent area. God, we pray, lift up a sign of the cross. Lord God, that the love of God at Calvary would be poured out Lord, again and again and again across our communities that we would see what we've sung. We pray, God of revival, pour it out, pour it out, pour out your spirit, pour out your love, pour out your grace. God, we thank you that grace and mercy triumph in Jesus. Amen. imagine Lord we pray for revival in this city we pray for your spirit to be amongst not just your people but people that have yet to see how good you are Lord that is our prayer this morning that your spirit would dwell in this land father we so need you God even those of us that already know you we need you every single day Lord be amongst us as we continue with our worship From heaven you came running 
of what Jesus has done for us that Jesus came Jesus left that high place of heaven humbled himself came to earth came as a little baby lived as a man to show us God and then died a death and rose again so that we might live and in that place of just reflecting on what Jesus has done for us we're going to give into our offering this morning this is as much a part of our worship as the songs we sing it's a declaration of our trust our gratitude to God you can give this morning using the details that are on the screen if you want to give online you can give using checks and cash in the bowls at the back but as we just spend a moment to give and say God you come first in our lives this morning I'm just going to lead us in prayer God, we worship you. God, we thank you that our story is that you came and you've rescued us from that place of not knowing you, brought us into that place where we can know the living God and the beauty and the joy, the hope that you've brought to our lives, Lord God. And we want to worship you this morning. We worship you with our voices. We worship you with our hands raised, Lord God. But we worship you as well with the blessing of all that you've provided for us as we give into our offering this morning. Amen. Please take your seats. And uh, sorry, my voice is a little bit croaky. You might have noticed already. We want to give a specially warm welcome to anyone visiting this morning. Um, it's your first time. You are so welcome amongst us. And uh, we have a welcome lounge out to the back. My left, your right at the moment, where you get refreshments, which is amazing, and um, friendly people to chat to and to ask questions if you want to um, about the church. Um, and also, we've got an Explore Church course starting this week, which will be lasting about three weeks. And um, it's a really great uh, time and place where you can get to know uh, the vision and values of the church. You can get to know us more. You again can ask questions. Andy and Janet will be leading it over Zoom um, and you can sign up uh, either at the reception desk or online via our website. But we really do love people connecting with us as a church. One other thing that I'm really excited about, which a lot of you probably know um, already, but we have a three-week season of prayer kicking off this week. Um, and we're going to be gathering on Wednesday night, this coming Wednesday, I think it's the 12th, um, here at Hedge End to pray. Um, and we just love to pray, don't we? We've prayed lots this morning already. It was wonderful to pray together last Sunday um, with our kids and as a church family. And we really are having an amazing privilege when we pray because we get to partner with God in the things that he already wants to do but somehow he chooses to do it with us and through our prayers and so I think we should take prayer really really seriously it's a weighty thing that we get to move the arm of God as we pray I can't do pretty much anything on my own but with God we can do so much so can I really encourage you to make prayer a priority um, in these next three weeks
Yeah, we're going to be praying for God to move amongst us, for God to come and save people, that people would know God. And last year, one thing we heard God say really clearly to us was, make room, make space. And on the back of that, in autumn last year, we moved into two morning uh, meetings, not just so that we could make space to keep us safe as we come back to -to face-to-face meetings and we could sit a little bit more distantly from each other, but also to make space for all of those people that God is, is wanting to add to us. But what we've ended up with in doing that is often quite a large 9.30 meeting and a much smaller 11.30 meeting. And there's not much room to grow in the 9.30 meeting. Now, we are committed to two meetings, but on the back of feedback, we feel that we just need to tweak the timings of those, those meetings. So from the 27th of February, the first meeting is going to move just a little bit earlier to 9.15 in the morning, and then And the second meeting is going to move forward. It'll be able to start at 11 o'clock in the morning, so it doesn't finish quite so late in the day. There's also going to be the same level of kids' work in that second meeting, that later meeting, to make that better for for families with young young children. And um, we'll send reminders out nearer the time of, of all of that, but we just wanted to flag that up today. If you're part of a serving team, team leaders will be in touch just with regards to what all that means uh, and and, and the practicalities of that, but we feel in just tweaking those timings a little bit, it'll just facilitate more what we believe God has called us to do in making room and making space. Now, on that whole subject of making room, we are starting a new preaching series today. Andy is going to be preaching a new series that we've called Everyone Invited. Let's listen to our Bible reading video, and then Andy is going to come and speak to us. A great wave of persecution began that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem, and all the believers, except the apostles, were scattered through the regions of Judea and Samaria. As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and he was now returning. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go over and walk alongside beside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, Do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, How can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up into his carriage and sit with him. The passage of scripture he had been reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? So, beginning with the same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water, And the eunuch said, Look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself further north at the town of Azotus. He preached the good news there and in every town along the way until he came to Caesarea. Just one more thing to add about the season of prayer. Given the high levels of COVID, we'll be meeting in person, but we will be running a Zoom prayer meeting on the Wednesday night uh, as well, and we'll put details out in the next 48 hours. But uh, as Chris said, we're going to start a short three-week series this morning, which I've called Everyone Invited. I don't know whether you can think for a moment of the last party or event that you got invited to. Maybe it was a wedding, maybe it was a birthday party, maybe it was a Christmas or New Year event. If it was in the last couple of years because of COVID, the odds are 
it would have been significantly scaled back. It would have been a more limited affair. We've all got used to, haven't we, things on a slightly smaller scale. But that is not the sort of party that Jesus loved to attend or loved to speak about. When Jesus did his first miracle, he created somewhere in the region of 900 bottles of the very finest wine at a wedding reception so that the host wouldn't be dishonoured because he'd run out of wine. That is some party, isn't it? When Jesus called his disciple Matthew, who was a tax collector, Matthew got so excited that he threw a party and he invited all his tax collector friends who was considered to be the scum of society at the time. And of course, remember where we got to just before Christmas, if you were here, when we were considering the verse in the Jesus on the Margins uh, series, Luke chapter 13, verse 29, people will come from east and west and north and south, and they will take their place at the feast in the kingdom of God. And what Jesus is saying there is that there will come a day when he returns and will fully establish his kingdom. And at that moment, there will be the biggest party the world has ever seen. And everyone is invited. Everyone is invited. So in the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at three key moments in the book of Acts where the Jesus story crosses over cultural and racial boundaries. In other words, where the Jesus party just keeps getting bigger. We're going to be looking at Acts 8 this morning, which is the moment where the Samaritans, who are half Jewish, are included in. We're going to be looking at next week at Acts 10, where the Gentiles, those who are completely non-Jewish, get included in. And then the third week, we're going to be looking at Acts 15, where the church makes some key decisions about the basis on which non-Jews are admitted to the family of God. You see, the basic story of the book of Acts is that more and more people keep getting invited to the party. Remember, both Luke and Acts are written by the same character. They're written by a friend of the Apostle Paul called Luke, who wants to show us how the penny dropped in the minds and the hearts of those first disciples. Remember Acts chapter 1 verse 1, Luke describes how in his first book he created a record of all that Jesus began to do and teach. And he uses that word began very deliberately because the implication is that in Acts he is continuing and extending the Jesus story in the lives of the disciples. And that at the heart of that is the continuation of the story of how Jesus reaches out to marginalized people. Jesus' mission to take the good news to those on the margins becomes the church's mission. And Jesus, very specifically, as he's about to ascend to the Father, addresses that. And he says to his disciples, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, that's the surrounding area around Jerusalem, and then to the ends of the earth. Now the reality is, when we look at the first few chapters of the book of Acts, the early church is actually quite slow to respond to that commissioning from Jesus. In fact, in the first seven chapters, they don't get out of Jerusalem at all. It's only in the death of Stephen, who is the first Christian martyr, that that triggers an outward movement, an expansion beyond those initial boundaries. We're told in chapter 8 and verse 1, right at the beginning of today's reading, all the believers, except the apostles, get scattered to Judea and Samaria because of a wave of persecution 
off the back of Stephen's execution. And I really would draw a parallel uh, between that and what's been happening with us over the last couple of years in the huge challenges of COVID. In a sense, like the Jerusalem church, we have been scattered. We've watched for months online, then we've regathered, and now because of new waves of COVID, there's some people not able to be in the room. There's a gathering, there's a scattering. I don't know about you, I am looking forward, hopefully, later this year, when we will be able to gather in whatever numbers we want to gather in without any of the restrictions of COVID. But in the meanwhile, God is well able to take a difficult situation, I touched on this last week, and turn it into a remarkable move of the Holy Spirit. He did it in Acts 8, and I really do believe he's doing something significant now. God did something in Acts 8 that changed the ethnic mix of the church as it was scattered. And over the last couple of years, we have grown significantly as a church. And much of that growth has been from people from other nations joining us. On the last Explore Church course, we had people from eight different nationalities in the room. I said last week, we now have more people, brothers and sisters from Africa in the room and part of KCC than we have ever had before. And in addition, of course, we've seen over 50 Hong Kongers connect with us as a local church. I love for the fact that 2021 saw our first genuinely bilingual event as a local church, as we did an Alpha course that ran concurrently in both English and in Cantonese. These are reasons to celebrate what God is doing here. What God was doing amongst the Gentiles in Acts 8, or sorry, amongst the Sumerians, was proof that ethnic and racial prejudice was off limits for the people of God. Samaritans and Jews had both put their faith in Jesus. They shared one Holy Spirit, they shared one Lord, they shared one faith, they shared one baptism. They were one church. Now, as well as telling us the big picture story of what God was doing amongst the Samaritans, Luke gave us, and we heard it in this morning's reading, a detailed story of a work of the Holy Spirit in the life of a particular specific individual, which actually had huge ramifications for the church as a whole. In the second half of Acts 8, Luke tells us the story of an Ethiopian eunuch coming to faith in Jesus. And what I wanted to do this morning was just unpack that little story to us and apply it to our lives personally and our life together as a church. It's the story of the first black African, as far as we know, coming to faith in Jesus. Here was a guy who would have been a convert to Judaism. That's why he's reading the Old Testament scriptures. He already knows the God of Israel, but he's not put his faith in Jesus yet. But as a, uh, a eunuch, he would have been excluded from temple worship. He was an important character. He's the Chancellor of the Exchequer in the royal court. He comes from a privileged background. But as a eunuch, he would have been, according to Jewish law, an outsider even amongst the people of God. But Jesus now is welcoming him in and including him in amongst the people of God. He is a visual aid to outsiders, you are included. You are welcomed in. Your racial background is not a barrier. Your previous exclusion from temple worship is not a barrier. The work of the Holy Spirit, when we dig into this story, is all over this 
um, meeting between Philip and this Ethiopian character. And Luke is at pains to show us how God is at work. If you look at verse 26 for a moment, Philip's encounter with this guy is the result of an angelic visitation. This is a God thing. This is a supernatural thing. Second, the conversation, verse 29, between Philip and the Ethiopian is the result of a nudge of the Holy Spirit. Go on, get up in the chariot with him, the Holy Spirit say. And clearly, verse 30, the Holy Spirit is working in the heart of the Ethiopian as he's reading the scriptures. And God is speaking to him. That's why he inquires of Philip. And then right at the end of the story, Philip is supernaturally teleported um, out of the conversation once it's reached its conclusion. This is a giant visual aid, this story, that the nations are joining God's family. Remember God's promise to Abraham way, way back at the start of the story? Genesis chapter 12, all the families of the earth God says to Abraham, will be blessed through you. And through Jesus, this promise is now being worked out to the Gentiles, specifically to a black African man. But of course, this black African man is representative of us all, because almost all of us, my guess is this morning, are non-Jews. We are all Gentiles who were outsiders, but have now been included in the people of God. Now, that's the background. You might think to yourself as a result of that, well, so what? What does that mean for me? What does that mean for us as a local church? And I want to just draw three things out of this story. First of all, we need to be people who listen. We need to be people, second, who understand. And third, we need to be people who connect. We need to listen, we need to understand, and we need to connect. First of all, let's be a people who learn from and listen to one another. We all have a story to tell, all of us, whatever our background, some of our stories will be painful, painful to share and difficult to listen to. I spent quite a lot of time over the last few years spending uh, uh, time in conversation with Steve Lee, who will be known to some of you. Steve is married to a lovely lady called Lorraine, who is from an Afro-Caribbean background. It's been eye-opening and it's been painful to listen to their story and to hear, even in 21st century Britain, in the, in the UK, of the racial prejudice, sometimes even in the church, that both they and their children have encountered over the years. We need to listen to those sorts of stories. That's why James writes in his letter, you must be quick as God's children, quick to listen and slow to speak. I don't know about you, sometimes I can be the other way around. I can be very quick to speak and I can be less good at listening. The Bible tells us we need to be people who are quick to listen. Second, we need to understand and celebrate different cultures. Give you an example. Just chatting to uh, a couple on the phone last night who are Nigerian and they've joined the church over the last couple of years. And uh, so I put them in my, inverted commas, Nigerian box. But when I get to know them a bit, I discover that the wife is second generation Nigerian, born in the UK. The husband was born in Nigeria. And therefore, though they are both, inverted commas, Nigerian, they are from very different cultural backgrounds. 
And of course, Nigeria is just one of many different African nations represented in the room. We've got Ghanaians, we've got Zimbabweans, we've got South Africans, we've got Ugandans, and probably others that I haven't clocked. And each nation has many tribes, each with its cultural distinctives. You see, understanding racial diversity is challenging, isn't it? Because the issues are complicated. It's not straightforward. So we need to listen, we need to understand, and thirdly, we need to connect. And I want to specifically draw out some things from the passage here. We need to connect at a deeper level, one with another, in the local church. Verse 31, give an invitation. Notice how the Ethiopian man asks the Jewish man to connect with him. He invites him to come and sit in the chariot. There was much that divided them. Ethnicity, Jewish and black African. There was also a significant class divide. The Ethiopian is high class. He is a well-educated civil servant. The Jewish man is from a much humbler background. But both people sit down together, they engage and they connect one with another. So they, they give an invitation. Second, they sit down together. Verse 31, they sit next to each other. When we sit next to each other, we learn from one another. In particular, they learn from one another as they study the Bible together. Let's be humble. Let's learn from one another. None of us, whatever our educational background, whatever our cultural background, do you know what? None of us has a monopoly on truth. Each of us has our unique cultural perspective that can help us understand the Bible better, but sometimes we will have cultural blind spots. That's why we seriously need to engage with books like the one I'm recommending this morning. It should appear on the screen. For years, all my theological reading has been from white European guys. I need to read some African theologians, some of the best theologians of the church's history over the last 2,000 years have been African theologians. We need to share Jesus with one another. Verse 35, our relationship is based first and foremost on what Jesus has done in our lives. We are gospel people. There is power in testimony. We sang it this morning, our opening song, This Is My Testimony. Many of us were blown away just before Christmas as we heard Sherry from Hong Kong give her story, her testimony. Wow, look at what Jesus has done in this person's life. Let's listen to one another's stories. And then finally, we can grow spiritually through one another and through conversation with one another. We need to encourage one another in taking next steps as disciples of Jesus. Verse 36, Philip encourages the Ethiopian eunuch to get baptised. That's a very, very practical next discipleship step. Now, were it not for COVID, I would be strongly urging all of us as a next step to invite one another into our homes. That's a great way to get to know one another. Realistically, that's pretty challenging right now. But can I urge you, as COVID hopefully recedes and uh, we adjust to normal ways of life again, let's make every effort, not just to say hello to other people on a Sunday morning, but to open our homes to one another. Let's invite people 
into our homes. Let's sit with one another, preferably with food thrown into the mix. Let's listen to one another. Let's allow Jesus to grow us through one another. If you're not yet a follower of Jesus and you're here this morning in the room or maybe you're listening online, I would really encourage you to sign up to Alpha. Alpha achieves all of these things. It is a great opportunity to investigate who Jesus is and the claims that he makes by sitting with other people, with talking, with conversation, and usually with food thrown in the mix as well. And just as I draw things to a close, can I say a couple of things? First and most importantly, we need to understand our vision as a local church is not diversity. It's a much bigger vision than diversity. If diversity was our vision, then our vision would only be as big as the vision of our culture and our society. We as the people of God, we as the family of God, have a much, much greater vision than simply diversity. Our vision is kingdom vision. Our vision is gospel breakthrough that both transcends culture and celebrates every culture. Transcends culture and celebrates every culture. Our vision is one new people in Christ. Paul puts it this way in Ephesians 2. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people. One new people. That's the vision. At the cross, all cultural, ethnic, national, class barriers and boundaries are torn down. Culture should be celebrated, but it should never be weaponized to divide us as the people of God. I want to go back as I draw to a close now and the musicians come up by quoting a verse I quoted at the start. We quoted it often in the Jesus on the Margin series before Christmas. People will come from east and west, north and south, and they will take their place in the kingdom of God. That's the vision. People from every tribe, every language, every people, every nation around the throne celebrating and worshipping. That's why what we are and what we do is so powerful and so prophetic. Who are we? Our diversity points forward to what God has already done and is doing through the cross in removing all barriers that divide people. And our greatest priority, that's why what we were doing in the first half of the meeting is so important. It's why what we're about to do is so important. Our worship points forwards to the worship of heaven. It's a prophetic declaration. We will one day be, be united with all of God's people throughout history and throughout the whole world, a people from every tribe, language, people, and nation. Can I just pray for us? That actually what I have shared with us this morning really is worked out in who we are as a people. Let's pray, shall we? Father, I thank you this morning that we all get invited to the party. And this morning, we want to say yes to your invitation. Some of us, maybe even for the first time, some of us are repeating a yes that we made decades ago. But Lord, we want to say yes, we're included. We're delighted to be included. Help us as a church to bring your kingdom more and more. Lord, help us to pray the prayer that Jesus prayed. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. 
Help us to be the sort of church community that is radically inclusive, where everyone knows that they are truly welcomed and part of the family. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's stand up, let's worship.
Now, one of our values here at King's Community Church is family. Family, faith, freedom. Family is really what Andy has talked about this morning. Part of the holiness of Jesus affecting our lives that we've been singing out is us having the same attitude as Jesus, being that family for one another. And yes, we're a large family. We're a family that spans here in the room at 9.30 and online and in our next meeting at 11.30 and goes into our connect groups and all the different ways we have of reflecting family. But I just want to pray for us. And let's just put our hands out and say, God, help us to better reflect the family that you've called us to be. Church is not an impersonal organization. We want to be family to one another. So God, give us the same listening ears that you had, the same understanding heart, the same open arms, the same eyes that look out for one another, hearts that beat for one another, eyes that look out to where the needs are and says, how can I meet your need and that cares for one another. God, we want to be family, family that is not limited by boundaries of, of race or class or education or situation or anything in our past or our present, but a heart that beats not just for you, but for one another with family that you've called us to be. And maybe today you've heard some of what we've talked about and, and you don't know this God that we call Father and you want to find out about what it means to be part of that, that family. And as Andy said, we've got Alpha starting in the first week of February and you can go to reception today or contact us via our website if you're watching online and find out more, sign up for that Alpha course. It's a great way to explore the Christian faith. And then just finally, as we finish, one way we reflect family to one another is by standing with each other and praying for one another. And I'm gonna ask the members of our prayer team that are here today just to come to the sides of the, uh, of the, the auditorium. And if you've got something that you want people to pray for you with today, maybe you're in need of healing today, maybe you're in a difficult situation today. We had a word that Claire brought earlier just to Becky and I as we we stood there uh, and, and worshipped about nobody is forgotten by God and God might want to bring that sense of hope into your life today if you want somebody to pray with you today we've got people on the side of the hall here if you're here in the room with us or if you're watching online just press request prayer and we've got a great team of people who would love to stand with you reflect family today and pray for you, whatever your need. No, no need is too big or too small. It's been great to meet together today. Have a great week, and uh, we will see you next Sunday. Well, thank you so much for joining us for our live stream this morning. It's been great to have you with us. Church is so much more than just watching a screen, isn't it? Church is about being part of a family, so we would love to connect with you. Don't leave this morning without filling out a connect form, and if you want prayer for anything in your life, we would love to pray with you, so click on request prayer. Thank you so much for being with us, and have a great week.